good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's great to welcome all of you to the induction ceremony for our 2021 fellows of the USC Sydney Harmon Academy for Polymathic Study. I'd like to congratulate all of our fellows and welcome all of the friends and loved ones joining us to celebrate our fellows' many, many achievements. As I think everybody knows, the USC libraries are home to the Harmon Academy because, as our founder, Sidney Harmon, said to me many times, the libraries are the most polymathic place on campus. And of course, I agree with that viewpoint. Throughout this really difficult year, the libraries also have remained a powerful source of community and connection. Every student who has joined, a, joined the Academy for discussions, their book clubs, and the Amundsen Lab projects has been essential to that community. I am so grateful for everything you've contributed as intellectually curious explorers and dedicated polymaths. You're a group of imaginative young scholars who care about knowing the world and who know how to sustain a community of caring thinkers. To our new 2021 fellows, you have distinguished yourselves among your peers as capable inventors and makers, as excellent researchers and communicators. Even in this strange and disconcerting time, you have great reason to be proud and optimistic about your impact on your fields of study, your professions, and the world. Before I introduce Harmon Academy Director Tara McPherson, I'd like to thank her, Karen Hubner, Curtis Fletcher, and Samir Ghosh for their exceptional efforts in moving the Academy's programs online this year. They accomplished that feat quickly, creatively, thoroughly, and thoughtfully and I'd like to applaud them for all of their work. Even virtually, they get ahead. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> Tara McPherson, in addition to her role as Academy Director, is Chair and Professor of Cinema and Media Studies in the USC School of Cinematic Arts. She's also an affiliated faculty member in the American Studies and Ethnicity Department. She studies media, gender, race, and the digital humanities. And she leads the Harmon Academy with much scholarship and dedication to our students and the Academy's role in intellectual life at USC. Thank you, and please welcome Tara McPherson to continue our celebration. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the fellows and to their families, and especially thanks to Karen, to Curtis, to Samir, to Dean Quinlan, to Hugh, to Patty, to Tyson. It's truly taken a village to move us all online and to sustain programming throughout the year. So I want to just recognize the hard work that the staff of both the academy and the libraries has undertaken in supporting all of our students this year. And while I suspect that many of our students would be happy to put their time on Zoom far behind them, I'm still thrilled that we're able to be here together virtually in order to celebrate today. In 10 years, we've graduated over 220 Academy Fellows. And as I often relate to our board and to parents, these students have graduated with shockingly high GPAs and impressive accomplishments, winning most of the awards that the university has to offer each year, as well as international awards like the Marshall or Fulbright's. And they go on to the most prestigious schools for graduate programs, for medical school. They take impressive jobs with consulting firms. Um, they work with technology corporations. Um, they find themselves in our government. Others follow different passions and become writers, artists, or teachers. But none of these accomplishments, as impressive as they are, are really what the academy is about. Our fellows are accomplished, but more importantly, they are fiercely curious, they are intellectually generous, they are deeply compassionate. At the Academy, they come together from many majors to think about large problems that society faces, problems that will not be solved by a single discipline. Parents, I don't know how you spent your college weekends. Um, I sometimes shudder to think about how I spent mine. But our polymaths do things like gather in groups to research and rebuild an ancient library in virtual space, or explore the ethics of AI and neuroscience, wearing wacky headsets while they do it. They have an amazing time in the process, and we all learn together. As faculty and staff, 
we learn from the students. So students, your GPAs and your awards are impressive, but really you were impressive, not because of those awards. I hope that one lesson you take away from you, with you as you leave the Harmon Academy is that awards and accomplishments are not the measure of your soul. Instead, your passions and the questions you ask are how you matter in the world. The things you've learned here will stay with you. You will know how to talk to people from many jobs and with diverse interests. You'll be able to think deeply about your values and what matters to you, approaching the world ethically and generously. You'll be able to connect the dots between many of your passions, perhaps finding a place for filmmaking in medical school. You're not graduating into the world that you imagined you would when you began your time at USC, and you will face unique challenges as our world continues to grapple with an ongoing crisis unlike any we've collectively lived through. If the world has ever needed polymaths, now is the time. And we look forward to seeing you go out into the world and put your polymathy to good use. Know that you always have a home here at Harmon, and we will welcome you back virtually or in person. So now I'd like to turn the program over to Dr. Karen Hubner and Dr. Curtis Fletcher, who will introduce our student speakers. Hi, everyone. I'm Curtis Fletcher, the director of the Amundsen Lab, the innovation lab that is part of the Harmon Academy and with which many of you had the opportunity to engage with over the last few years. Um, I just want to offer a very heartfelt congratulations to you all. You're joining a very impressive and obviously polymathic company of students who have graduated from this university as fellows of the academy. Um, and I think I just I just want to I just want to say I, I hope that your time with us was enjoyable, meaningful, and and obviously thought provoking, and that you know the events in Doheny and our programming at the lab. And I think the Harmony community in general um, offered you, you know, a unique space where you could reflect not just on the many, many strands of new knowledge gained in your studies here at USC, but, but also on aspects of your own personal life. And, you know, obviously a place to reflect on the sometimes tumultuous events going on all around us. And I just, I hope that we offered you through our programming and our community, a place where you could, um, at least try to kind of pull all of that together in a meaningful way and come to a more integrated understanding of the world. Um, so now I'd like to introduce the first of our fellows to speak, uh, Grace Fogel. Grace entered USC through its early entrance program. She's been involved with several student organizations and activities, including serving as president of Teach for Los Angeles, which provides free tutoring services for K through 12 students and USC's neighboring communities. Uh, Grace was also a two-year resident assistant in the USC Village, a student mentor for USC Marshall Curry Applied Leadership Program, and a volunteer tax preparer for low-income LA residents through USC's VITA program. And of course, she's been a faithful member of the Harmon Academy during all four years at USC. She was recently selected to be a Leventhal undergraduate student commencement speaker and will begin a full-time position with Doyle Tut at in Los Angeles. Thank you so much for the introduction and hi everyone. Uh, I'm Grace Fogel and it's so exciting to be here today in celebrating all of the graduating fellows. I've been part of the Harmon Academy since my very first semester at USC as a freshman in fall of 2017. And I very much consider it to be a place where I've seen myself grow intellectually and as a scholar. I entered USC as a 16 year old accounting major and I quickly became involved in clubs and volunteer organizations, uh, which are things that I'd found meaning in since high school and that I wanted to continue at USC. But when I discovered the Harmon Academy, it was clearly a program unlike anything I'd experienced before. And I can clearly remember my very first polymathic pizza uh, where Dean Sony was the speaker uh, talking about finding meaning and one's purpose. 
very intriguing topic for a first year college student who had just Googled what polymathy even was. And since then, I've truly felt my mind being stretched as I've become aware of topics that I hadn't previously explored. And I always felt so excited uh, when the topic of the polymathic pizza was something that I knew about and I could share some of my perspective with my peers. The community here at the Hartman Academy has been absolutely incredible. Um, and back when we were in person, I was consistently meeting new people and seeing fresh faces at each event, which is a true testament to the draw of the Academy. And it's been great continuing to interact with people of the Academy over Zoom. Uh, so I'm very grateful to Dr. Huebner, Dr. McPherson, Dr. McCann, all of the other faculty and my fellow students for making the Harmon Academy such a warm and inviting environment. And I'm so happy to have been and continue to be part of this community at USC. It has entirely enriched my undergraduate education. So thank you for everything. And of course, congratulations to my fellow fellows. Thank you so much, Grace. And it has been a joy to get to know you over these past four years as well. So. Uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you fellows for bringing your own unique meaning and brilliance to the, our polymathic encounters. Tara, Curtis and I might provide the programmatic scaffolding, but you bring the life and purpose to the academy, the flesh and bone, flesh to the bone, so to speak. You are the academy. I imagine each one of you will take polymathy with you into your professional and personal lives from nursing to neuroscience, from aerospace engineering to the arts, seeing the interconnectedness across disciplines as you practiced in the academy over the years with the promise of enhancing and enlarging your fields of expertise and in no small measure, impacting the world and its future for the better. I echo Tara's sentiment, we need you. We're counting on you to think big, and expansively, polymathically, in other words. Some of you I've had the honor to know since your freshman year. This year, COVID has afforded some of you to, who otherwise couldn't participate to connect by zooming in from faraway places. Even one fellow, Nick, I've known since he was in his mother's womb. <laughs> I've been so enriched witnessing your engagement with one another and eminent faculty picking up on interconnectedness between seemingly disparate fields of inquiry, respectively pushing one another in conversations into broad and unexplored terrains. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your investment, your engagement, your passionate curiosity. I have been deeply inspired by and learned so much from each and every one of you. And I also wanna thank Tara and Curtis and Samir for an amazing collaborative adventure. It's, it's just a highlight of, of my life. So it is my pleasure and honor now to introduce our next fellow speaker, Emily Yin. Emily is graduating with a degree in global health. After graduation, she will begin working in private equity in Los Angeles. She hopes to pursue a career at the intersection of global health and business, specifically in impacting, impact investing to improve access to medicine around the world. Emily. Thank you for that introduction, Karen. And thank you all for being here to hear me speak. Um, first of all, let me just say how honored I am to speak on behalf of the Academy, which has been my home since I found it four years ago. Uh, when I joined, I was so amazed at how intelligent and passionate and inspiring the community was, not just the professors who are experts in all their fields, ranging from marine biology to astrophysics to dance, but also my peers. Um, I was so excited to be around students who were intellectually curious and learn for the sake of learning instead of just getting the grade. And I think with every polymathic pizza, we began to understand a little more about how our universe works and how we could find our place within it. While the Academy hails multidisciplinary study and bringing this mindset to our increasingly siloed world, for many of us, the re revelations we had here were personal. I remember going on my first Catalina retreat 
where I was in awe of the scenery, the panels with amazing professors, and of course the company. I enjoyed it so much that the next year I volunteered to plan the retreat just so that I could go again. And after two days of thinking about stability and entropy, which was the theme for the year, um, and thinking about how we've somehow made sense of the chaos of the world in so many different ways, the students all hiked to like the tallest peak in the middle of the night and we shared our moments of awe, which is exactly what it sounds like. And the underlying theme of everyone's moment of awe was that they found a place where they were stimulated and challenged, but more importantly, heard and understood. And when you put it like that, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. Uh, every event that I've been to at the Academy has been a moment of awe. As you've probably gathered from my remarks, the Academy is truly an awe-inspiring place. It's more than a place of multidisciplinary learning where PhDs and first year undergrads can explore a topic on equal footing. It's a place where diversity of thought is celebrated and differences in opinion actually bring us closer together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to me, the Academy is the best thing that this university has to offer. A place to explore every topic under the sun with really cool people and eating some pretty good pizza. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have had the opportunity to be a part of something as special as this that has made my time at USC truly awesome. Thank you to Karen and Tara and everyone who has made this possible. And most importantly, thank you to all the friends that I've made in this program. And I can't wait to see where you all go. So congratulations, class of 2021. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Jane Carpenter. Uh, Jane is graduating from USC with a major in chemical engineering and a minor in German studies. After graduation, she will actually remain at USC for another year to complete a progressive degree and obtain her master's in financial engineering. Uh, on campus, she is an editor for Illumin magazine, which seeks to showcase the connections between engineering and everyday life by publishing articles written by undergraduate Viterbi students. Outside of school, she loves to learn languages, collect vinyl records, bake, and pursue all things polymathic. Welcome, Jane. Thank you, Curtis, for that introduction. And hi, everyone. Thanks for being here today. And I'm really grateful to be able to share a bit, just a small bit, about how the Academy has impacted me. Um, as I sat down to start brainstorming ideas for this speech, the first thing that popped into my head was to open with a joke about how I was an engineer, so you shouldn't get your hopes up for my eloquence. But of course, this is exactly the wrong crowd for that joke, as everyone in attendance knows that being an engineer doesn't preclude me from excelling in other fields, just as, say, being an ethicist didn't prevent Aristotle from contributing to zoology as well. So the second thought that popped into my head was, shoot, I'm probably going to have to spend more time on the speech than I thought. Um, I find it funny, though, how my instinct is still to associate engineer with the stereotype of being calculated, antisocial, or robotic when I am one myself, and so many experiences I've had in college contradict that image. Specifically through the Harmon Academy and its STEM-oriented offshoot, the Amundsen Lab, I put my engineering skills to use in everything from designing a space travel game for the California Science Center to pursuing artistic projects using cutting edge technologies in the club Corpus Callosum. And I've even learned new skills like creative coding in Java or how to operate a Raspberry Pi, not to mention the multitude of lectures I've attended putting engineers in conversation with experts from other fields. And it's experiences like these that make me a better engineer, contradict the stereotypes, and allow me to approach problems from a holistic perspective. And I'm forever grateful for these opportunities and the way my eyes have been opened through them. There's no doubt in my mind that the learning and thinking we've done in the Harmon Academy will influence our lives greatly, whether it's back in an academic setting or in a professional one, or even in a personal one. And I can honestly say that no organization at USC has prepared me better to face tough questions and consider them carefully or given me more hope about the ability and passion of my peers to do so. And for that, I'd like to extend my thanks to Karen, Curtis, and all the other members and faculty of the Harmon Academy who have influenced my time at USC, especially my fellow fellows. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you so much, Jane. And uh, 
I will confess that when I found out you were an engineering major, I was really surprised because you, I thought you were a philosophy major. Anyway, with all your comment, comments at the event. So I, I thought for sure you had to be a philosophy major. <laughs> so, uh, so you belong in our, in our community to be sure. Then the final speaker for today uh, happens to be um, a student that started the Academy uh, as a freshman and entered uh, my life in many ways. Personally, uh, I went on, he invited me to go on Peaks and Professors trips. And then for the last three years, he's been my trusty assistant and brilliant and taking care of everything for me. Uh, when it, whenever I have a, a tech need, he's there. He's just been absolutely so invaluable, but a dear, dear uh, life friend. I will, I will I'll say you're going to be in my life, Tejas. <laughs> so Tejas Ramdis is uh, graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Computational Neuroscience with a minor in Philosophy. He's a true, true polymath. He basically likes to think about thinking without really accomplishing much, and I would disagree. Outside of class, he conducted research on the biophysics of neurons, led students and faculty on outdoor trips through peaks and professors, and coordinated the alternative breaks trip to, the, to Orcas Island centered around environmental justice. He owes a great deal of gratitude to the invigorating discussions at the Harmon Academy for fueling his time at USC. And we owe a great deal to him as well for fueling our conversations as well. He will have to find a fresh source of pizza, which I'm on it, uh, as he begins his PhD in neuroscience at Harvard University in the fall. Tages. Yes, thank you all for being here. And thank you especially to the fellows for uh, tolerating all my, my, my many emails. Uh, so the past four years at USC have truly expanded my horizons and my model of the world around me. Uh, in the Harmon Academy specifically epit epitomizes this aspect of my college experience. Uh, and although I enjoy all the programming at the Academy, I think I'm most grateful for the flexible space it provides uh, for an eclectic mix of people to come together, that is all of you. Uh, and I think it makes so unexpected and organic conversations. Uh, and I find it somewhat ironic that I end up seeing these same faces in other random corners of campus after I meet you here. Uh, I think one important lesson for me, uh, thanks to the Academy, is that the goal is not simply to crew a slew of different facts, uh, but to actively look for connections between them. Uh, and to do this, we have to stay on our toes looking for these opportunities uh, and be audacious enough to grab each one that excites us. Uh, and at the same time, as we have all learned, uh, or I guess unlearned from Athanasius Kierke, uh, humility is equally important. Uh, and one of my favorite takeaways from the academy will be Professor McCann's concept of the Doppler effect, uh, which is that wrong ideas seem smarter the faster they come at you. Uh, <laughs> and I'll admit that I've fallen victim to this multiple times, uh, but I think it be behooves us to think rigorously and persevere through the many inevitable phases and challenges when nothing makes sense. Uh, so as we all head off into this volatile world uh, where each day comes with new challenges, uh, I think it's important to stay intellectually agile. Uh, we should be ready to explore these new ideas and never feel intimidated by the unknown unknowns. Uh, and even though we're graduating this week, I hope that we can all continue to vicariously learn new things through one another uh, and perhaps even cross paths uh, once again sometime in the future. Uh, so thank you very much and very grateful to all of you for participating in the discussions and being at so many of these Zoom meetings. Uh, and I hope I uh, get a chance to see you again in the future. So thank you to our student speakers. Um, I think that many of us have had a hard year and there's been a lot of turmoil and loss, but I finished the year deeply optimistic from the time I spend with our polymathic fellows. Um, the world is in good hands as they leave USC and move out into it. And I look forward to seeing what they do. Um, 
Tejas mentioned for you, I'm Ed McCann, a professor of philosophy and English at USC. He is, you know, part of the heart and soul of the academy. He has um, led our polymathic quadrant sessions, which all fellows participate in since the academy began. And he was among the small group of faculty um, who worked together to design um, the, the concept of the academy and how we would roll it out on campus. So um, I'm happy to introduce to you my colleague and friend, Ed McCann, who will um, tell us who the fellows for this year's class are. Ed, on to you. Thank you, Tara. Um, uh, I'll just say at the beginning, I have a specially privileged position in the academy because uh, given the structure of our requirements, um, I get to meet every student who is going to eventually be a fellow as well as uh, other students who uh, add to the mix of our program. It's been a wonderful experience. Now uh, I will uh, call off the names of our 17 inductees at this time. The first name is Nicholas Brasida. Are we? Okay, congratulations, Nicholas. Uh, next, we have Jane Carpenter. Congratulations, Jane. Kalani Dunka. Congratulations, Kalani. Grace, oh, sorry, uh, almost out of order. Uh, Sarush Ershadifar. Congratulations, Sharush. Grace Fogel. Congratulations, Grace. Samuel Jump. Congratulations, Samuel. Mike Koyama. Congratulations, Mike. Well done. Uh, Joanne Lee. Congratulations, Joanne. Uh, Oscar Lee. Congratulations, Oscar. Uh, Clinton McLean. Congratulations, Clinton. McRae Maurer. Congratulations, McRae. Hannah Mulrow. Congratulations, Hannah. Tejas Ramdas, who you just heard from. Uh, Mitali Shanbog. Mitali Shanbog. Congratulations, Mitali. Janice Alexander Sturman. Oh, sorry, Janice. I mispronounced it. Janice Alexander Sturman. Congratulations, Janice. Uh, Caleb M. Weinbrenner. Congratulations, Caleb. And uh, Emily Yin. Congratulations, Emily. Those are our 17 fellows. And uh, um, we heard from several of them, but you know that's just a sampling. Uh, if we had if we had uh, had uh, remarks from everyone, you would see just a, what a remarkable group of scholars, intellectuals, and personally engaged humanists we're dealing with here. Thank you, Ed. That goes much faster when we do it virtually than when we do it in person. <laughs> I am very sorry we are not there to welcome you to um, a wonderful reception where we could linger together and talk about moments that um, were significant to you at USC and in the Academy. And I'm especially sad not to meet your parents and families who um, are always a highlight at this time of year when um, we get to um, talk with with them about polymathy and and see where you came from but we definitely look forward to seeing where you go and we'll be um staying in touch with you as part of our ever-growing alumni network and look forward to welcoming you back to usc and to the academy in every kind of way so we wish you the best um, we hope that polymathy continues to serve you well as you chart the next paths through your life and um, always consider your home here, um, not here in Zoom, but here in the virtual space behind me that you know so well. So thank you.